Here is another small house that I drew. We have two bedrooms, one bedroom here, one bedroom here, closet, closet, bathroom. And then we have the front entry door here, rear entry door here, window in the kitchen, small kitchen, and room to where you can put a small table here, refrigerator, washer and dryer, living room. And of course, it is 625 square feet, 25 feet wide, 25 feet wide the other way. And next up, let's zoom in on some measurements here to give you an idea what we're dealing with. And I'm just going to go ahead and scroll up here. And the whole reason for this is just to be able to provide you with some measurements in case you're planning on building a project like this. And I do not have any plans available to the public for this and probably won't in the future. And of course, let's go ahead and zoom out here and head over to our next part of the video where we will be taking a look at the framing. Now I'm going to use a 4 and 12 roof pitch with some trusses here. And I'll talk more about the roof trusses in the next video. So let's go ahead and take a tour around the house here. Give you an idea of what the framing is going to look like. Now let's go ahead and remove the building so that we can take a look at the footing placement or location underneath the home. And even though I drew this footing in for future home designs, you will not need this if you're going to have a truss roof because all of the interior roof loading will be transferred to the perimeter walls, which could save you a few dollars during the construction of your project. And of course, you will need anchor bolts. I didn't draw any anchor bolts in here to fasten the home to the building foundation. Next up, let's go ahead and install our walls. And again, take a look at the front of the house here, bedroom. Closet, closet, bath, bedroom, kitchen area here, washer and dryer, living room. And what I want to do here is what I have done in previous videos, and that will be to break down the wall framing into sections, starting with the front wall and the back wall. Now, the front and the back walls are going to be practically identical, except for this window here and this one here. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the back wall where we're going to have a smaller wall here in the kitchen. And that's going to be to provide us with a little more room for the countertop and its backsplash. And this is definitely something you should spend a little more time on when you're designing it. Do not let that become a mistake when you're building your project. I've seen it happen more than once. And of course, this wall right here, even though it's going to be the same length as the opposite wall, the wall on the other side, it's going to have three channels in it for the intersecting walls that will be connecting to it. And next up, let's go ahead and head over to the other side. Two channels here and no windows. You can always add some windows in if you want to. And even though I don't have any anchor bolts in this video, you will need an anchor bolt within 12 inches of the bottom brakes and within 12 inches of the corners. Another problem that I see often, let's go ahead and install our walls to hide the washer and dryer. And of course, you wouldn't need these walls if you weren't worried about that. So we're going to have a washer and a dryer here and a refrigerator on this side and then some base cabinets that will wrap around over to here a sink over here, and then a range over here. I don't think you're going to have enough room for a dishwasher in that kitchen. And then these two walls here, again, will be identical. Again, making the job a little easier. Next up, let's go ahead and add a few more walls. Our closet wall here, the wall here to separate the closets from the bathroom. And I don't have my tub backing in here. However, I will try to install that in a future video. Then our closet door and our bedroom door. Let's go ahead and head over to the other side where we have the same thing. Bedroom, closet door. And even though these two rooms are small, I don't consider them to be too small. I've seen some designs where the rooms are like 8 foot by 9 foot, where these are going to be a little larger. So the center wall here, and again, this is not a load bearing wall. However, if we build a conventional roof with a conventional ceiling or roof rafters with ceiling joists, then this will turn into a load bearing wall or can turn into a load bearing wall. 
I'm not about to suggest you can't use larger lumber to eliminate the concrete footing. However, that might not be cost effective. Again, our framing plate here, four foot away from the next break. And of course, all of our windows and doors will have one trimmer. You need double trimmers on doors and windows that are five foot or larger, kind of a common construction practice. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this video up. This is the wall framing here. In the next video, I will provide you with the roof framing for a truss roof. And I will be making other videos on different roof designs, along with modifications that can be done to the building, like adding a garage and porches.